Hello and welcome back to the Zul'jin Distillery Invitational League. How's it going, everybody? I am the Crushinator, and tonight I am bringing you some round robin action between Wood League and I Must Feed. It's like we've got our final player in the lobby. We should be up and running here in just a moment. Sir, ready whenever. Give him the heart. All righty. Let you know about the state of this matchup if this is your first time checking out the Zul'jin Distillery Invitational League. You'll notice there are quite a lot of maps here in the map pool. Uh, that one at the bottom looks like Blackheart's Bay. That's not actually in the map pool, but the ARAM Lost Cavern map is. So that's the icon I'm choosing to use for it. But we'll, uh, we'll get into the map bands here as we see Wood League is banned away Dragonshire and Sky Temple. And... I Must Feed as Band Away, Garden of Terror, and Alterac Pass. And we're going to be going to Braxis Holdout for game number one. These teams are up and in it and ready to go. So let's jump right into that draft. I Must Feed won the coin flip and did choose map pick. So they are bringing us to Braxis of their own volition. Wood League. Thinking about their first bands here. Oh, you know, the big player to make sure you're making, you know, keeping aware of, obviously, is North on the side of I Must Feed. Very strong flex player, very strong on outplay style assassins. So we'll have to see what of those will come through here. Going to be opening May ban, followed by the Tychus ban. May does pretty well on the uh, control points from the early game perspective. Tychus just really strong overall. So not too surprising to see those banned away. Sorry, I'm just double checking my audio. It's going through all the right places. The Windows update just screwed everything up. But I think it's all good now. Woodley going to take away the Rexar. Very good for top point control. It's hard to wrestle that back without a particular hero matchup or strategy in mind. So definitely makes sense for the map. I must feed going to take that Sonya away. So we'll see what Wood League wants to prioritize here. You've got your Hoggers, you've got your Uthers up and available. Looking at, uh, we got a couple solo laners banned, one tank, one ranged band, so there's not really a choke in any other role. So it's really going to be up to what Wood League is the most comfortable on here. Ronan's going to lock in the Diva. Diva still very, very strong up there with the, uh, up there with the Hoggers and the Sonyas in the, uh, the offlane meta. Wave clear is decent, survivable. We'll have to see what I must feed does in response though, because usually, you know, you can lock in your uh, your soul lane a little bit later to try to hide that. But I must feed's going to respond with a Tassadar Malfuri in a pretty common combination for these folks. Tassadar pretty strong in the early game there. Malfuri and also very strong out the gates with that big root. Blister Fiendum to Gully, be picking those up here. So Wood League dealing with two fairly flimsy backliners taken by I Must Feed here. We'll see what the response is going to be. They've got to be a little bit worried about a Diablo with Tychus already banned. Cyan going to lock in the Johanna here. Lady Ronan going to be playing Stukov. So going to be trying to gather people up and put them in that silent zone down there in the bottom lane. Neither one of them very you know, particularly divey. So it's not going to be the tank that's flying into that Tassadar Malfurion. We'll see if Woodley picks up anything that can pass the enemy tank easily. I must feed going to ban away the Cassia. Good pairing with Johanna, possibly. Not so strong on the uh, on the wave clear that can be necessary here on Braxis, but just sort of a really strong assassin that can make it so you don't have to clear those waves. Just kill the enemy on the point. Woodley going to take away Garrosh here. Garrosh definitely a good pairing with Malfurion. And very strong in the uh, sort of cramped quarters down in the bottom lane on Brax Assault Out. I must feed, thinking about their next two picks here. It wouldn't surprise me to see a Diablo come on through. It's actually going to be Deathwing here for Sudden Bears. Not clear yet if it's going to be off lane or main lane. Imperius here for John Goodman. I would assume that Imperius is meant to go against D.Va in the top lane. 
and Deathwing will be down in the bottom lane to help have the zone control and wave clear locked down. We'll have to see what that matchup is going to be. Wood League with their last two picks here. Looking at Deathwing, Malfury, and Tass. They're going to lock in Kael'thas and Vala here as their last two picks. Kael'thas will provide some much needed CC if they do manage to actually get past this Deathwing. And Vala can provide some pretty uh, some pretty good damage, though it's pretty short range versus this Tassadar Malfurion combo, so Droopy's going to have to be careful out there. North with the last pick here. Taking a look, has the full amount of data in front of them. Going to lock in the Genji, a Braxis holdout favorite over the years due to that deflect damage on the boss and due to being able to have some very quick rotations between top and bottom lane. Diva not especially gankable, though with Imperius you can put out a little bit of burst damage. Interesting to see what the rotations are like and whether there's enough raw damage on the side of Wood League to get through that Deathwing in the early game. Alrighty. Loading on into our game number one. <clears throat> there's some good early game on the side of Wood League. I will say that. Early game over on the side of I Must Feed, though, looks very, very imposing. This might be a quick one. We'll have to see how these two teams clash. I think I gotta give it to I Must Feed right now. With this Deathwing Tassadar combo and the Malfurion support is really gonna be able to trap anybody that they come across, and it's gonna be very, very difficult for Wood League to actually step into that. But it all comes down to the matchups. We'll see how they do. So we're loading on in. Alrighty, let's get into it. On the left in the blue, we have Wood League. Kavlor is going to be on the Kael'thas, Droopy playing the Vala, Lady Ronan on the Stukov, Cyan playing Johanna, and it is Ronan on the Diva. The right in the red, it is I Must Feed. John Goodman on the Imperius, North is on the Genji, Listerfiend playing Tassadar, Bagully on the Malfurion, and top lane, Sudden Bears on the Five, Deathwing. So it's four, actually going to be Imperious three, down here two, in the bottom lane. One. Not what I was expecting there. Time for we'll have to see how that works out because we've got a fairly passive composition between the Malfurion and the Tassadar. Though if Imperious does catch someone, they're going to be stuck for quite a while between the Roots and the Wall. Interesting. I was expecting the wave clear from of Deathwing to be what they uh, what they put the pressure on but down here. But Tassadar does provide an awful lot of wave clear by themselves. There's a big double spear from John Goodman and North going straight in with the swift strike. Nice wall coming on out, but Stukov is there with the bio kill switch heals to start things off. There's uh, that's a good preview of how these clashes are going to be going between these two teams down here in the bottom lane. Checking up top, looks like Ronan doing a good job into Sudden Bears there. Already peeling one of those armor plates off of Deathwing. Genji waiting in the bush here. Ronan gonna clear this wave, put a little damage on Deathwing, but here comes Genji, immediate boosters on out of there. We see members of Wood League gonna go ahead and pick up their camp to time that out with this first objective. This isn't something that enough teams do, honestly, is prioritize the minion, or the uh, the camps here on Braxis Holdout. They are powerful. They do provide a lot of, uh, of wave control. As we see, these gonna march up and make the side of uh, I Must Feed deal with this. As, uh oh, there's the root combo out on, or onto Kavlor, and Kael'thas will fall as first blood here. Nice lunge by John Goodman is going to allow the members of I Must Feed to control both points immediately. Ronan trying to run circles around Sudden Bears here, but Deathwing's auto attacks are nothing to nothing to sneeze at. So we see North and Droopy going to battle it out here. Vala could be in tough shape, is going right in with the Swift Strike. Is North, oh Genji a little bit low there, Ronan almost had the pick. A nice pick up. Now Ronan trying to get back onto this point, I don't know if it's going to be there in time. Yep, yeah, actually bottom lane did channel. I must feed at the two-minute mark, already nearly picking up their first objective of the game. Uh-oh. 
Ronin could be in trouble here as Genji trying to get the last hit. That's going to be it. Diva has been demacked. And now, claiming the top lane back here as I must feed. Cyan was pushed away here. Oh, Risterfiend taking a big hit from the Flame Strike. And our first Zerg wave of the game is already on the field here. Coming out strong is I Must Feed. You see Sudden Bears on the Deathwing pushing alongside this wave. Big rotation coming on through from Wood League to try to deal with this. Deathwing zoning out that uh, wave. Diva Bomb is going to go off and clear away most of this. That's a uh, it's pretty effective setup there from Wood League. Only losing the front wall. Keep her fort is still fully standing. So an early start here for I Must Feed, but a pretty decent defensive response from Wood League. Very nicely done. Here we see I Must Feed going ahead and picking up this top side Hellbat camp. Diva headed on over to check that out. Diva could be in a little bit of trouble here as Bagulli coming on through. Sudden Bears looking for the cutoff. Diva doesn't have the boosters just yet and will get out of trouble there. Meanwhile, on the bottom lane here, Imperius could be in all sorts of trouble. John Goodman will not be able to be saved in time as Imperius goes down as Wood League's first kill of the game. Genji coming on down to try to help with this push. It's still a 4v3 here. Sun comes out onto Tassadar, but Tassadar was able to wiggle away from that silence pool. Cyan waiting to go back in. Without the wave, it's going to be a little bit tough to just jump on top of this tower. Iron Skin going to be used, and there they go. They're going to try to get this tower down. Cyan taking some big, big hits there. Nice wall there from Listerfina. That's going to be Johanna going down. Droopy trying to vault away. Deflect comes on out. John Goodman spears too. Droopy gets away. Genji's actually going to be counter-killed, but there goes Stukov. Cavalor manages to get away as well. W of Imperius nearly picking up a double kill there. Ronan actually being chased down by Sudden Bears. Wow. Deathwing dueling away there in the top lane. A lot of razzle-dazzle going on between our two teams. Here in our first map of the day. Ronan trying to stay here to soak some XP, but ultimately has to go back like a stiff wind or any kind of attack from Genji would have been hit for pilot form D.Va. I must feed has picked up the bruiser camp, going to be using that to time out down in the bottom lane. Going to be countered by this Hellbat. Ronan back on the battlefield here is going to have a mech up and available in just a couple seconds. There it goes. Camps will clash here. But a full level ahead right now is I must feed. So Wood League's got to be careful about their timing here. The longer they wait, the closer to level 10s I must feed can be. John Goodman going in with the Impale. Wall does not catch Lady Ronan, but does catch Droopy. We see North trying to put the damage out onto Vala. Oh, Lady Ronan hit with just the edge of that shock ray. It's a lot of low members here. North waiting for an opportunity to go in. Stukov once again with that bio kill switch so effective in healing up Wood League. But this is going to be I Must Feed controlling both of the points once again here. We'll see whether this 4v4 Cyan trying to work their way onto the point. Gathers up John Goodman here. The follow-up stun from Kael'thas will not land. Thing to note is the arcane barrier for Kael'thas is up and running. Already at 23 globes here. Good focus on to the wave clear. From what league? John Goodman finds the spear. The Cyan trying to get away here. Nice peel by Cavalor is going to land onto north. But level 10s have arrived for I Must Feed, so we see Wood League in a little bit of a pickle here. Droopy way far forward, getting some good damage onto Lister Fiend. Does peel backwards, very nice positioning there. Getting some good damage onto the back line. But this is I Must Feed continuing to channel here. Sudden Bear's going after Ronan. Ronan going to try to step onto this point, but will not be able to stay for very long. Diva, uh oh, Diva is in a world of hurt here. North coming on up. This is Genji. Almost certainly going to be securing this. Oh, the mech available. So Ronan going to be just fine, but the Zerg wave going to be pushing down the bottom lane. We'll see if Diva 
Diva does have the bomb to be able to come down if necessary, but right now Diva's staying in the top lane. A couple tens have arrived, which means Phoenix is coming on out for Kael'thas. Look at that psionic storm damage. Listerfiend look, trapping two on the edge there. North moving in to try to pick up the kills. Nice counter there onto the Dragon Blade. Droopy always going to find the kill onto Genji, but Kael'thas going down as well. I Must Feed is kind of getting baited under this tower right now. John Goodman outranges it and gets the last hit onto the Stukov. Falla falling as well on the bottom side to Listerfiend. Wow. That was looking like a bloodbath from the start, but Woodley... I, they were like a, a step away from getting multiple kills there. Nice work finding the kill onto Genji, but nice work again on the side of I Must Feed turning around and picking up those counter kills and now they're pushing all the way onto this keep wall here before the nine minute mark checking on our top lane here looks like genji going on up to try to harass ronin once again trying to get that mech defeated and there it goes sudden bears does get the hits here ronin could be in trouble north goes across and that is going to be it sudden bears actually taken out by the fort deathwing not respecting that minion damage and that fort focus. Fort focus. <laughs> oh, that's a fort joke. But we'll end up being a one for one. This fort is still standing. North trying to get the last shuriken hits out here and will ultimately take down the structure. See what I must feed wants to do. They're rotating aggressively here, looking for a catch. Lady Ronan going to step out. North is going to get the dismounts. Nice counter stun, though, by Kael'thas is going to stop Imperius. And look at that, the blow up Genji with nowhere to go, just stuck in that silence zone. Pushed back by the black hole are the members of Wood League. Ronan in the back line is a little bit isolated here. Sudden Bear is getting completely chewed through. Deathwing going to go down. Droopy moving on up here, putting huge damage onto John Goodman. Imperius trying to get away, but Imperius is going to fall here. Shockray will not land onto the multiple low health pool heroes. Listerfiend going to be slowed there by Cyan. The Stukov connection is in, and Tassadar is down. It's an extended quad kill here for Wood League. They're going to take out this bottom fort. We'll see what they can do here. Some great catch-up experience has Wood League right back in this game. They're going to go ahead and do a Bruiser Camp steal here. Clear that away. We'll see if they're going to think about boss. Nope, they're just going to move in and steal all of these camps. Try to align that with the beacons activating. Back to full strength here is I Must Feed. Couple members trying to bait out some rotations. North, uh oh, has used the mobility here. Genji could be in trouble. The silent zone comes out. The body block is in, and that is going to be it for North. Not expecting that forward pressure from Wood League, and that is a very timely pickoff. Nice work, nice work indeed. Sudden Bear's trying to deal with his top lane wave. Ronan going to sneak over here and get the beacon capture. Now Wood League, they're really starting to turn this thing around. Fall headed up to the top lane here. This could be an opportunity, though, for I Must Feed to move in. They could do a three-on-three three if they see Vala step out. Looks like Droopy is on the way back down. Checking on our top lane here. Ronan getting a little bit chunked. Deathwing's starting to move on to the point, but Genji could be on the way there. And Diva will concede the point. So now we're back to a stalemate. Diva waiting for a rotation from the rest of the team. We are going to see Wood League starting to move up to this top lane. Go ahead and start this uh, start this bruiser camp. They are quite ahead for now. Looks like North is going to go and scout this out and see that Cyan is alone. See if I Must Feed is going to aggress onto this point as the back bruiser cap is taken. Genji just scouting around trying to find Wood League here. Wood League has been doing a good job of staying off the map. You see Deathwing and Genji are moving up to clear this away. And I must feed looking a little bit befuddled right now. Droopy and Cyan are now showing in the bottom lane. The rest of the crew is starting to catch up here as the Hellbat camp is claimed by Ronan. 
And there we go. Now, I Must Feed is going to see where Wood League is. North is coming in, looking for a flank. Level 16s are here for I Must Feed. And Wood League currently does not control both points. They're as five down here in the bottom lane. Deathwing going to drop on down, and we could have ourselves a fight here. It is 16 to 15 for I Must Feed. Diva going to move back up to the top lane to try to stop as much channel as possible. Right now, Wood League, they want to just prevent a Talenteer down fight. Or this scouting out here, we'll see Ronan and Lady Ronan. Both just playing around with the vision here. Genji will not grab this top point, actually. Ronan gets there just in time. Level 16s are almost here. For Wood League, this wave should do it, and there it goes. Johanna trying to cut off the rotations here, north with the scout. We'll see who makes the first move. Wood League is trying to control this top point. Sudden Bear is trying to get into position here as the push onto the top fort continues. Cyan is going to catch two. The wall will not be committed here by Listerfiend, but a big shock ray on three members. It's going to force Bio Kill Switch out from Stukov. John Goodman starting to move on to the point, and we could have ourselves a scuffle here. Cyan moves across here. John Goodman does not get hit with the Nether Wind. Sudden Bear's going to fly into the back line, but John Goodman is there with the Impale, going to catch two. There's the ult from Tassadar as well. A huge fear coming on out from Sudden Bears. Kael'thas going to be the first to fall. Lady Ronan exploding in the back from the Conflagration. That's a two for one so far. As North trying to get away from Ronan, there is the Micro Missiles. Droopy catches up and Genji goes down. Sudden Bear's trying to get away here. Droopy catching up with that movement speed. It's a two for two for now. Ronan moves forward right now. Oh, Deathwing is fully committing. Listerfiend very low in the back line. Deathwing going to go down. Droopy is so low. Ronan is going to pop out of that mech form. Try to get some autos. He's going to miss with the big shot, though. Oh, my God. One shot. Right? Oh, my goodness. Ronan trying to get the last hit onto anyone, but Begully keeping everyone in just enough health range. Wow. So many possible deaths there. Nice positioning by both teams. Here a calf. Thank you very much for the follow. How you doing tonight? It is going to be 100 to 33 percent Zerg waves. The so Woodlake has to be careful. That's some, you know, so not an insignificant amount of Zerg, especially if it goes. Un, uh, uncountered, those drop pods come in and make that Zerg wave last a lot longer. So that top keep could definitely be in trouble if this becomes a long push. But they're going to commit here. They're moving right onto the bottom keep. The Zerg wave is starting to take some damage. Sudden Bears breathing into the heart of that wave, but is forced back here. This is looking like possibly a keep for a keep. There's another big breath coming through from Deathwing. Keep down to 20% health as Genji trying to use the deflect damage, but the keep is down. You see Wood League is going to move on back and try to get the backs here. The wave is already onto the top keep. One Guardian left. Big wave here. There's that drop pod. Going to drop down one more Hydralisk, and I don't know if they can get here in time. Wood League is on the way. Avalor trying to clear this away. The Guardian is still shelling away. It looks like the keep is going to be saved. So good disengage there. Defeated. Resetting pens as Very the nicely done, but here comes I Must Feed. They're moving aggressively. Going to see Cavalor on this rotation. Droopy, oh no! Droopy actually gets past the Impale. Cavalor pops the Arcane Barrier in time. Droopy, though, is being chased down by the Dragon Blade, and there goes Vala first kill. North moving on back in. There's the swipes coming on through from Lady Rona to try to push back I Must Feed. Nice rotation there from I Must Feed getting the pick, and now they're going to use their bodies. Try to steal these camps. Nice route coming on out onto Johanna, and one more kill has been picked up. What can they do here? Lady Ronan being chased. John Goodman going to get the spear, and that is going to be Stukov going down. That's going to be a triple. 
And now this top keep is definitely in jeopardy. Could the core be in jeopardy? There are no win minion waves here. North going to move on to the back line. Cavalor will escape the Tassadar wall. I must feed maybe going for it here. They have no minion support at all. And there's still two members up here. Cavalor still has the arcane barrier. Will get away from Imperius. Ronan pushing in on the edge. Droopy has now spawned. Diva Mech going to try to defend the core, and it looks like I Must Feed is going to back off without any chip damage onto this core. That would have been... I think they were moving in, hoping they could find another pick or two. But they would have needed to find probably two kills in order to try to end that game. Go with Raka. All right, we'll go with Raka. Level 20 is here. North, gotta be a little bit careful. Maybe someone else should tank that for a second. Oh, Kenji! Careful, buddy. There we go. All right, North gonna go head on back to base. Genji nearly going down to the boss's extra rocket summons there. Beacons are spawning, though. Boss gonna be pushing down this bottom lane. Right now, I must feed is setting up a little bit of a death push here. It's going to be Bruiser plus boss in the bottom lane. I must feed. Looking to control both points as Genji going to move up to the top lane and get the beacon channel. Ronan moves forward but finds a lot of members available on the point for I must feed. Ronan going to be caught by that electric fence. There's the root and the stun going out. This root lands once again and that is the power of Malfurion into D.Va as Ronan's going to go down here. Nice interrupt by Cavlor on that impale. Johanna trying to use the Blessed Shield for the peels. Droopy trying to trade out in the back line, but Gully trying to move away here. North very low as well, but John Goodman with enough health is going to take out the Vala. Stukov falling as well. And this is almost certainly checkmate. We have the Bruiser Camp pushing in the bottom lane. The Zerg Wave going to be coming through the bottom lane as well as Kael'thas falls. North, oh my gosh, almost taken out by the Nexus forces once again here. Cyan, the only person available for 25 seconds, and this core is going to go down before the Zerg wave even arrives. Nice job there. I must feed. They uh, they didn't retain control through the mid game. Woodley did a great job of coming on back there. Ultimately, the zone control from I must feed puts them ahead. Very nicely done. A great game number one between our two squads. Take a quick look at the stats. Droopy on the Vala. Very nice aggressive positioning. Trading well into I Must Feed there. Coming out with the 46,000 damage. Cluster Fiends Tassadar. Very strong W build setup there. Coming out ahead on the damage. 64.5k. Take a look at the talents here. A little bit of a, uh, a hybrid here. We've got the Static Charge. On the Shock Ray at level 1, into the Electric Fence, and then going with the Psionic Echo. As well as the Psychic Shock there on 16, so definitely mixing it up there a little bit. The build going with a bit of Shock Ray damage, a bit of Psionic Echo damage. See if there's anything else super out of the ordinary here. Everything looking fairly regular. We saw the perfect defense. Coming on through big for Genji there on that boss. Overall, great game number one. What can I say? <laughs> Is Wood League the slightly more Dalian version of Wood League Express? Could be. I think it's uh I think it's a reformation of an older squad, if I recall the lore of Wood League. Alrighty. Looks like we're going into our game number two right away here. And we are going to ARAM. Guess it doesn't really matter who chose it. <laughs> Since there's no first pick opportunity. We'll say uh we'll say I must feed chosen. How about that? So, is this my first ARAM cast ever? Hmm. I'm not sure. It might be. 
I might have done it casually just on a stream once. Excuse me. All right. But yeah, we're going to ARAM here for game number two. I'll have to see what the what cards are dealt, how many Asmodans each team is going to be able to draft. Ugh, Asmodan. Asmodan and ARAM is awful, and I don't like it. <laughs> is ARAM not done in draft mode? No, I don't think it's possible. It's just, you know, it's just the way that you, like the way you queue into it. Teams are in. Give them the caster ready. So we'll have to see here whether it goes to a draft screen that I can see. I don't... I mean, maybe I can see one of them and not the other. Or if it's just going to send us straight into the game. But, uh... Yeah. I casted ARAM in the Season 9 All-Star match. That's true. I did do that. It's been a while since that one. definitely possible. I've not seen that. I can't say I've seen it. Like, was it a custom? Like, did you go custom Lost Cavern and then... Like, it put, it brings up a tournament draft? That's what you're saying? I can't say I've ever seen it. I'm pretty sure in that uh, I've only ever seen it as like just the normal pick three or you know give three pick one. But I guess we'll find out. We'll see what these teams do here. I don't think there's any specific rules for like how the ARAM is supposed to be set up. I didn't see anything in the uh, in the Discord. We will have to see. Right now, lobby mode is set to standard. So I'm guessing it's just, you know, the way that I'm used to seeing it. <clears throat> Do a quick check here. See if anyone's talking about it in the Discord or not. All right, well, it's up to the teams. It's their, <laughs> that's their set. They can do what they want. Well, last time they did it, Haunted Mines, and that's not even in the map pool, so. <laughs> it's all chill. It's all for fun. All righty. I'll let them know I'm ready. Annalise, thank you very much for the follow. Welcome. Hope you're doing well. Oh, they're now talking about the draft mode. Just ready up, it'll be fine. Oh, I think they think that they're picking heroes. Can't believe you weren't following. Hey, sometimes, you know, if you always click in through, you know... I know there's some casters that I forgot to follow because I always just clicked onto them through the NGS Discord. And I was like, oh... I should probably follow these people. Alrighty. We're loading in. Let's see what we see as a caster. Hmm. So I get to see Wood League's side. Can I swap? What happens if I press that? Nothing. Just makes a sound. <laughs> Alrighty, we'll have to see what the teams are going to be as we load on in here. Overlord's Hungry Fairy Dragons also sent out a threat and tweet on your behalf. Oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Alrighty. 
Loading into Aram. On the left in the blue, it is Wood League. Cavlor is on Kira. Droopy playing Johanna. Ronin is on Zagara. Cyan playing Li Ming. And Lady Ronin is on Lucio. On the right in the red, it is I Must Feed. Lister Fiend is on the Nova. Sudden Bears playing Ana. North is on Kel'Thuzad. Begully playing Alex Straza. And John Goodman is on Taronda. Quite the setup as we get into our ARAM game number two. So no particular tanks on the side of, uh, of I Must Feed here. Just going with the big time damage time. It's Troopy moves on up there. Will not get the chain connection onto the teammates. Looking at the wave clear situation, Kel'Thuzad is kind of the bulk of the wave clear over on the side of I Must Feed. Whereas Johanna exists here for uh, for Wood League. So that's going to be, you know, there's going to be a lot of pressure onto this front wall as we load things up here. Kel'Thuzad getting a couple stacks there, now at three on that Master of the Cold Dark quest. Lucio amping up that party mix there on level one, just getting those ticks every second that the aura is active. North is going to be targeted there by Cavlor. The booming kick comes on back. Kel'Thuzad trying to get behind the wall. Ooh, it's a lot of low health bars. But between Ana, Taronda, and Alex Straza, healing, not a huge concern. There are no, uh, there are no mercenary camps on this particular ARAM map. So all these teams can do is clear and brawl. It's John Goodman going to be forced back there. Alex Straza trying to put down the abundance in the corner. So yeah, I mean, a lot of the poke damage. Oh, North is going to get kicked back by Cavalor. Nice engage there. Sudden Bears very low on the edge is going to get away there. Ana nearly taken out his first blood of this game. But look at this wall almost already taken out here by, uh, by Woodley. Fiend working on the edges here. Nova, oh, actually getting the full hit by the magic missiles. Really, the name of the game is what's the Kel'Thuzad stacks here for, uh, for I Must Feed now at 8. As the front wall now completely falling. Trying to siege in here with that Li Ming damage is Wood Lead. Nice damage out onto Droopy. Forces out the Iron Skin from Johanna. Abundance comes on out here. Trying to take a look. There's no there's no anti-healing effects until uh, until Lucio at 20, I believe. Over on the side of Wood League. So that healing will not be abated. But this fort already down to half health, and there's honestly not a whole lot that uh, that can be done here. Crush tell Kingleberry we didn't pick this. <laughs> Kingleberry, you're getting called out. But I guess it was uh, was Wood League that ended up choosing this. We'll have to update the tracker afterwards. But yeah, right now, just kind of getting wave cleared to death. As Cavalor takes a ride on the Kel'Thuzad Express once again. I disagree with that hitbox. That, that clearly missed on the far side. Kel'Thuzad getting a little bit of love there from the engine on that connection. And uh, fort down. And right now, only just now, do the members of um, of Wood League have to back and use that tap. As we are now three and a half minutes in with a fort down. High five will make it hard for KTZ to carry. It's very possible. Between the unstoppable Johanna and the constant unstoppables from Lucio, it's definitely going to be a tough one. Now the wave's being pushed up onto the wall here. Catapult is caught on this back gate. Get him, Catapult. Get him, Catapult. Combo comes out, not going to land onto Wood League. Kel'Thuzad almost has the Glacial Spike online. Just needs one more hit. Will not find it there. Disagree with anything that kills you in this game. Well, it's, you know, 
Strong stance from Goon. How you doing tonight, buddy? Welcome to the XGDI, where ARAMs are legal. <laughs> Geltazad now with that Glacial Spike online going to be a little bit easier to combo as we see it come out there. Still not going to quite land there, but is going to keep on working on it. One tower down. This catapult is still working. No, North! No. That catapult worked so hard. Almost got this gate down. <laughs> Evening up the wave here is I must feed trying to move up, but just there's not a whole lot that can be done into this Johanna. Glacial Spike comes on out trying to get a hook over the corner here. We'll not quite find it. So we now have another catapult marching down the lane here for Woodley. John Goodman out there trying to get some wave clear going. Cyan continuing to poke with those big combos. John Goodman actually going to get hit here. Davlor manages to retract before getting caught behind the wall. And yeah, zero kills so far in this ARAM. His level 10s are now online here for Woodley. Iron skin from Johanna denies the combo. There's the Blessed Shield coming on out. Kira will not connect, but Kel'Thuzad is caught in the Devouring Maw. Sudden Bears trying to get the heals up, but Gully with that Dragon Form not enough to save Kel'Thuzad. And our first kill at the 6 minute mark of this ARAM comes on through here for Woodley. Tavlor getting another quick connection. Oh, it's actually not going to be high five. Lady Ronan going with the sound barrier there as the Frost Blast comes on out. Going to root. Uh oh, North in all sorts of trouble. Tavlor flanking on the edge. John Goodman going to go down as well. That's Kel'Thuzad and Toronto falling. Legalize <laughs> Arams. That's what I'm talking about. That's what I'm talking about. Keep taking some damage here. Nice double sleep dart from Sudden Bears. Oh, Toronto with the Owl from downtown, actually. Chunking out Lucio a little bit there. Glacial Spike comes on up. It's going to catch Zagara. The root comes on through. Toronto hits as well, and Zagara is going to go down. Droopy counter engage and catches two, and Cyan is going to start popping off. Li Ming trying to catch up. Nice heals there onto John Goodman. Cyan almost got a couple of resets there. All of a sudden, fighting back a little bit is I Must Feed. Zagara making their way back to the battlefield here. Coordinated globage over on the side of uh, Woodley. I Must Feed picks up their own globe before heading on back into lane as they try to clear away some of this creep. Look at that. Look at that sneaky little creep tumor. Stay alive, creep tumor. We need you out there. Wave starting to move up here. Blister Fiend going to be discovered on the edge. Living on the edge. Level 13s are here for Wood League as the siege continues onto this keep. Glacial Spike combo going to land onto Cavalor, who escapes the Taronda stun. Blessed Shield comes on out. They're looking for John Goodman here, and Taronda is exploded. Ronan manages to get away from North's, North's combo. Uh-oh, Frost Blast comes on out. Droopy going to be going down there. The Sound Barrier trying to save Cavalor and Lady Ronan. Getting some good value out of that ult as this keep continues to be damaged. Li Ming just throwing those combos in. North not going to get hit by the Revolving Sweep. John Goodman throws out the ult there. Gets the hit onto Cyan. Once again, without a without a real way to engage outside of Kel'Thuzad, I must feed. A bit of a tough spot. Look at this little creep tumor. Stay alive, creep tumor. We need you. No! Creep tumor! Alright, creep tumor's down. Zagara, I'm afraid you're going to have to make a new creep tumor. Sad. Johanna looking for a flank here. Droopy coming along the edge here. Still mounted. There's the combo. Comes on out. Gonna catch three in the Condemn. Final strike. Hits the gully, but no one low enough. Look at that. Li Ming actually caught by the combo coming out from north. Cavlor trying to find Lister Fiend on the backside as Droopy pushing back the rest. Devouring Maw onto three. Is there enough damage to actually follow this up? No. 
Lee Ming down. That's a lot of the burst taken away here. Sound Barrier gonna save Ronan for now, but the combo, oh, not gonna hit. Mr. Fiend working on the edge here, and that's gonna be Zagara going down. Cavalor in all sorts of trouble will be taken out as well. So a couple extra kills coming on through for I Must Feed. But the wave still not caught up here, so there's not a whole lot of siege that they can get done. They've got to head back here. Try to catch up this wave. North just putting out some damage onto this wall. Uh-oh, Droopy has come in, though. North may have overstayed. There's the Frost Blast going to land onto three. Elthazod getting healed up. Lucio is actually going to go down here, and look at the healing coming on through. The rest of I Must Feed got there in time. Now Droopy being turned on. Johanna is going to fall. All of a sudden, I Must Feed, they're getting back into this. Their keep is uh, a little worse for wear. We'll see if uh, Woodley can recalibrate here. So North is finished that baseline quest. So the Kel'Thuzad damage will be actually significant. Wall is mostly down here for I Must Feed. Johanna making their way back to the battlefield. Combo comes on out. He's going to land onto the Zagara, and look at that. Zagara taken down once again. The sound barrier not quick enough. It's Lady Ronan being forced back as well. Lucio going to fall north. Going to be healed up by all three of those healers. Kel'Thuzad going to be doing just fine. Kira down as well. It's a double kill. Fry must feed. Nova gets hit with the combo from Cyan. Oh no, Cyan's starting to pop off here. Two kills for the Li Ming. It's going to halt that push right in its tracks. Oh, nice hit. That was, a, that was a difficult skill shot there by North. Very nicely done. Cyan is going to blink away from that chain combo. Cyan gets the hit. Oh my gosh, look at that. Look at those hits. On to Kel'Thuzad. Li Ming going for that full orb build. Trying to get some damage onto the back line there. Cyan is going to get hit with the Frost Blast. Li Ming is going to survive. The initial damage from Frost Blast is still very, very low. It isn't mainly a CC tool. Right now, Kira on the way back. Now the wave clear game starting to become more important. Here comes the wave across the map, Droopy. Not going to engage just yet. There's the spike going to come on out here. As North tried to run a bait there, throwing the chains not quite hitting a member of Wood League. There goes the keep. The big orb from Li Ming is enough to take that down. Taronda ult is out. Starfall lands. Cavalor does not get the revolving sweep. On to John Goodman. Level 20s are here. For I must feed. North moving in aggressively, looking for a combo. And has to is forced to try to clear away this wave. Glacial Spike comes on out. Not gonna be enough here. Is oh Ronan actually going down on the bottom side. Zagara could not get away there. Forcing Wood League to move back. See how much I Must Feed can do here. 24 seconds on Zagara. Yet another creep tumor is savagely taken from this world. Cyan blinks away from the precision strike. Zagara's still down for 12 seconds. The wave is starting to catch up here. Glacial Spike comes on out. North gonna get hit with a combo from Cyan. Wave pretty much cleared away here. North trying to step up once again. Cavlorg not connecting with that E. Sagara making their way back to the battlefield. Big Taronda Owl going to land onto two. There's Wood League. Oh, there's the Frost Blast out. Oh no, Cyan going to track it into the back line. There's the huge sound barrier. Ronin is very, very low. Devouring Maw is not going to hit, but North is in a little bit of trouble here. Oh, Li Ming does not connect with the orb. I thought that was going to land. North is so low here. Cyan poking in from the edges. Droopy is going to go down first. Cigar falling as well. There goes Lucio. Kira is down. It's a quad kill here for I Must Feed. And here at the 14-minute mark, they might get some damage onto this fort. It's possible. North almost going down multiple times there. 
so difficult into this triple healer setup to finish those kills if it's not an instant clap back. Though with this orb build Li Ming, it is definitely possible. So I am going to be caught here, but with the range on that blink is going to get away from the Taronda stun just fine. Cyan trying to get away from this clone. Listerfiend, ooh, with the cheeky plays there. Ronan gets away from the Taronda stun. Now back to full strength is Woodley. Trying to move on out there. Cavalor trying to get the wave clear in. It's going to be difficult here. Woodley has to move in as a group and try to deny the burst combo of I Must Feed. North moving in threateningly once again here. Mr. Fiend working on the edges. There's the Glacial Spike coming on out. It's not going to land, and here's the per turn. Ana gets the Nano Boost out. There's the Root only going to land onto one, and there it is. Kel'Thuzad is down. Three members hit with a Devouring Maw. But after Zagara goes down, there goes Taronda and Ana as well. But Gully on the backside is going to be taken out. Alex draws a fall. Cyan... Pops Listerfiend out of stealth. It's a four for one. Can any core damage be done? They're surging across the map here. Minion Wave will be a little bit behind. Cavalor is on the core. 14 seconds till Kel'Thuzad is back. Woodley. No minion support to be had just yet, but core down to 80%. Nova poking in from the edges is not going to be able to do a whole lot here. Precision Strike comes on out. But here comes the minion wave. Kel'Thuzad is back. Four seconds till two more members come back. Oh my goodness, Kel'Thuzad with the long range bombs. North almost goes down there. Droopy trying to get away here is going to be hit by that root. Core down to 23%. There's the sound barrier from Lady Ronan. Core at 15%. Droopy just keeping North countered on the back line. And this is going to be it. Wood League takes game number two. GG. Wow. I must feed had to do a lot to try to get back into that game, and they were starting to do it. But just one one slip in that late game was enough, especially when your keep is down there on Lost Cavern, to just have the other team surge forward and end the game. Very nicely done there from Wood League. You saw Cyan on the Li Ming just comboing away like crazy there with that orb build. Nearly 90,000 damage. North on the Kel'Thuzad. Sort of top in everything because it was the only source of anything in terms of damage coming in from I Must Feed. Nova, Taronda doing some respectable damage as well, but all the wave clear here was on Kel'Thuzad. Honestly, I thought they executed that comp about as well as they could. They survived as much as they could until the late game. They were starting to turn it around. Those fights were going their way. But all of a sudden, these insane blow-ups from out of nowhere, which is really what Wood League needed to do came on through and evened up this series 1-1. Take a quick look at the talents for those who are interested. And I believe we're going to do a very short break in order to get the hydration station up and running once again. Alrighty. Thanks for hanging out with me thus far. We are going to a game number three, but first we're going to take a short break. So stand up, stretch, go get some water, and we will be back with game number three of Wit League versus I Must Feed. Hello and welcome back. We're getting into game number three here of Wood League versus I Must Feed. Lobby is up and running. I've let them know I'm ready to go. If you're just joining us, I'll let you know about the state of the series so far. Wood League banning away Dragonshire and Sky Temple. I must feed banning out Garden Ter Garden of Terror and Alterac Pass. I must feed choosing Braxis holdout for game number one. Picked up the first victory. Wood League striking back on Lost Cavern. Picking up the victory there. And now I must feed is going to bring us to Volskaya Foundry here for our rubber match. Last one was uh it was a doozy. on <laughs> Lost Cavern. We had a triple healer with a Nova and a Kel'Thuzad. Which, you know, went about as expected in the early game. The mid game, they were starting to strike back. The combos were starting to land. And the extra healing was doing a good job of denying burst out from Wood League. But ultimately, all it took was one late game team fight 
for the wave clear and the siege available from Wood League to push on through for the victory. Great job with the comp there. Looks like we're getting on into our third draft of the day on Volskaya Foundry. See what our teams have to show, show here as Wood League does have first pick. Tassadar going to be the opening ban there. Going to force Listerfiend to find another hero for this game number three. Tassadar was doing an awful lot of damage there on Brax's holdout, I will say. That hybrid QW build was uh, was putting in the work for sure. See if I must feed sticks with similar bands or if they want to mix it up a little bit here. Going to go ahead and ban away the Sylvanas. Didn't see a Sylvanas there in game number one, but it is something that can enable the push of the Protector and can just allow getting some very important chip damage onto early walls. So I must feed not wanting to deal with that. Wood League, considering their second ban here. Last time we saw a Deathwing Imperius set up from I must feed for the front line. I take away the Chromie, so trying to eliminate those long-range assassins from the hero pools of I Must Feed. Hmm. Hmm. Makes me wonder what the plan for Wood League is here, because they, you know, in terms of long-range assassins, I mean, you've got your Hanzo left, and you could do something like a Rainer, I suppose. It could be they're trying for something a little bit more aggressive. As we see Brightwing banned out by I Must Feed. Excuse me. Gonna be the May opening up here. May was banned by Wood League in the first game. But Cyan gonna lock that in here. Immediate counterpick of Sonya by Sudden Bears, as it was up and available. See what the combination pairing is gonna be with this Sonya. Uther is available. I don't know what the Ana here, but Gully going with that Ana. I wonder if... I don't think I've seen a nano-boosted Slam Sonya. I don't know how much extra value you can get because you can only cast it every so often. And it's already an extremely short cooldown. I mean, you'd get the damage and the healing from it, I suppose. But I feel like a nano-boost Sonya is wasting some of that potential because you just never auto it there. Okay, might end up being okay. We'll have to see if that's the plan here or if there's going to be another nano target. Or if maybe we get the Eye of Horus. You never know. Immediate show ban out from I Must Feed following the Oriole pick from Lady Ronan. See the Gazlo to counter or to go against the Sonya down there in the bottom lane. Ana chosen here. Yeah, I mean, there's still a, a number of mages that can take advantage of it. Kael'thas is up, Jaina is up. You got stuff like Malfeel can do some work with a nano boost. Take away the Anubarak here, so I'm not going to try to limit the options there. Instead, going after the tank pool once again here. Will be Kael'thas here for Listerfiend to pair alongside that Ana and John Goodman. Going to lock in the Johanna as the tank here for I Must Feed. Now, Oriole is not so often a solo healer anymore, so I'm interested to see if Wood League sticks with that solo or goes with a double healer setup here. You can do that with something like a Cassia to just bring enough damage alongside the May. It's going to be a Gul'dan, though, here from Cavalor, a little bit more of a classic combination with that Oriole. And Droopy is going to grab the Hanzo. And North, very interested in playing Zeratul, will lock that in immediately. Zeratul can definitely do some work into Oriole. Oriole will have a tough time getting away from that. Gul'dan can put some damage onto Zeratul if you wait for the blink to go away. Hanzo, decent auto attacks. We'll have to see what the uh, what the setup is like. It seemed like North wasn't, you know... North wasn't interested in all in seeing what those damage picks were going to be. Just went ahead and slammed it. But overall, pretty decent matchup there for Zeratul. Volskaya is a map that can go late. Alrighty. Teams are set.
getting ready to jump into our game number three here to see who will win this XGDI matchup. Alrighty. Game number three is underway. Once again on the left in the blue, it is Wood League with Droopy on the Hanzo. Ronan playing the Gazlo. Lady Ronan on the Oriole. Cyan on the May. And it is Cavalor on the Gul'dan. On the right in the red, it is I Must Feed. Sudden Bears on the Sonya. North playing Zeratul. But Gully is on the Ana. John Goodman playing Joanna. And Lister Fiend is on the Kael'thas. Five, four, three. Game number three is underway here. Winky face followed by question marks are up in the chat. Gul'dan going with that E build. Going to be trying to stack corruption. Hanzo with the W quest there for Wood League. Kael'thas will be looking for globes to get that arcane barrier online. Kavlor has stolen all the good luck by not reciprocating the wishes of I Must Feed. A dastardly opening play by Wood League. Gazlo already down in the bottom lane. Zeratul not too effective in the opening brawl. Is just going to go ahead and push in that top lane. Gul'dan's wave clear is definitely going to help enable the double soak here for the side of Wood League. So Zeratul likely will be mostly camped out in the top lane, just making sure that they're not falling too far behind. As we see a little bit of bomb spread there from Wood League. Droopy taking some damage. Looks like May and Gul'dan going to keep up with the double soak wave clear. Right now, Oriole and Hanzo here on the left. As we see an invade coming on through, this is this is what a, a Zeratul comp can do early. If you're a little bit behind, you go in and you go and try to steal this cannon. Cyan coming on through the backside here. Is going to contest this. May is on the point. North is pushing back Droopy here. Hanzo moving away. He's going to... Escape down to the bottom lane. John Goodman maintaining pressure on the point, but Johanna getting very, very low. North is now chasing out Cavalor. Gul'dan with nowhere to go is going to fall. So, Wood League, they managed to get their, uh, they managed to get their turret, but they lose one for the effort, and they lose their main wave clear as well. Good job by, uh, by I Must Feed identifying their strengths in the early game. Almost pulling it off there, but it was a pretty good response. May and managed to get onto the point with that icing. As we see now Ronan pushing in this bottom lane. Heavy, heavy pressure here on the waves. Back turret is picked up by I Must Feed as Ronan does manage to get away from the rotation. Gul'dan back. The wave clear train is leaving the station once again here for Wood League. Johanna Kael'thas, pretty similar wave clear. But right now, North just using that Zera tool to hold things down in the top lane and go ahead and start up this camp. Gul'dan doing the same thing over here for Wood League. Checking in on our bottom lane, our two manaless heroes. Just throwing cooldowns at each other. Shielding for the Gazlo. Regeneration for the Sonya. The endless battle will go on. Moving back onto the point, which is now unlocked. John Goodman gets away from the whippity wap of Oriel. And our first point will now start to be channeled by Wood League. Zeratul's up in this top lane, clearing away the push, so that's going to be something that Wood League has to deal with. Looks like Droopy is coming across here to try to help with that. But it'll take Hanzo quite a while to clear this out. Maintaining pressure on the point here are the rest of the Wood League members. As Ronan and Sudden Bears continue their ceaseless battle. Oh, can John Goodman moves forward. Cavalier could be in all sorts of trouble there. North goes in and gets that last Vorpal in. Finds the kill onto Gul'dan. And that's, you know, Gul'dan, not a lot, a lot of damage, a lot of AoE, not exactly a lot of escape. Going to be very reliant on Oriole and May in order to save their positioning. So we'll see if Wood League can make that adjustment throughout this game. North almost getting taken out there by Droopy. 
Not something that you expect, but, you know, Hanzo's damage is nothing to sneeze at. North gonna try to counter this. Droopy gets over the wall. Does North have something else? Nope, Droopy gonna get away there. Gets behind the wall. Checking out Gul'dan, only six stacks on that level one quest so far has been pretty much stuck in the wave clear department. Not able to really move forward onto enemy heroes to get those E stacks. We'll see if any can come through in this scuffle. Getting a couple stacks there, now up to eight. Looks like Wood League is going to keep this channel. Right now, I must feed. Looking to move back onto this point. But there's an awful lot of turrets available on the edge. Sudden Bear's looking for a flank here. Cavlord is engaged onto once again by Zeratul. Sudden Bear's just moving across that back line. Cavlord with nowhere to go is going to go down. North chasing out Droopy here. <laughs> Droopy with the self-cast Sonic Arrow. Going way up high. Oh, it's the double kill. Zeratul and Hanzo go down to each other. Ceaseless battle continues as right now. Oh, that's a big hit from Kael'thas. Lady Ronan in all sorts of trouble. John Goodman with a good body block trying to catch up here. The bomb spread. Oh no! Cyan moving the living bomb onto Oriel will confirm that kill. And now May has to back off Ronan, staying and trying to trade this out, but Gazlo is going to go down. Big E from Gul'dan, but not enough to secure any kills. And I must feed is going to grab this first protector of the game, as well as their level 10s. It is going to be the nano boost for Ana. Leap coming out here for Sonya. It will be Void Prison for Zeratul, so no Might of the Nerezim dueling to be had. They're going for the big combos. We'll see if they do the, uh, the leap into the Void Prison setup. That you can do with this combination of heroes. Right now, Sony and Gazlo trying to soak out those off lanes as the protector getting part of the wall and all of the well. Cyan so taking a little bit of damage there, but the protector has done about all it can do. It's got 20 seconds. If it tries to move in too much further, there's a chance it just gets blown up and Joanna and Kael'thas are stuck in no man's land. Level 10s now arrive for Woodley as well. It is going to be the Dragon Strike for Hanzo. So going with that big AoE rather than the stun. Avalanche has been chosen for May, so the positioning of I Must Feed is going to be very important here. Cyan moving across the back line, looking to find Lister Fiend in the Avalanche, and there it is. Kael'thas sent into the back line. Gazlo goes down in the bottom lane. Lister Fiend, oh, is actually going to get away, but Gully is healing up. Listerfiend, there's the nano boost. Listerfiend trying to turn this thing around. John Goodman low as well, and Begully, what a save. Coming on through from Ana. It is resurrect for Oriel, as you can see on the minimap down there, Gazlo's corpse. Uh-oh, there's the Void Prison leap combo coming on out there. Lady Ronan gets the heal off, trying to move away, gets the stun, but Oriel is going to fall. There we saw it. We saw the Void Prison with the leap combination there from I Must Feed. Now, Leap is on, you know, nearly half of the cooldown of, uh, of Void Prison, so Sony going to be looking to get those Leaps in pretty much on cooldown in order to leave it set up for Void Prison. Gazlo back on the battlefield, going to push away that bottom lane here. Excuse me. The push... Continues here, but level 13 is in for I Must Feed. Both teams working on their turret camps here. So no invade for I Must Feed. Just going to be a quick trade. Zeratul continuing to hold down that top lane. If we take a look at the experience, we see that's starting to pay dividends here. Over 4,000 extra minion experience gained by I Must Feed due to that good lane coverage. Uh-oh. Big rotation coming on out onto Gazlo. Ronan caught unaware here, trying to move down to the bottom lane. Drops the self-stun, trying to heal up with the laser, but will get caught by the Kael'thas stun, and Gazlo is down. Big rotation coming on through. Fry must feed, picking up that kill. We'll see what they can do with it here. I move back to the mid, get that clear. I was thinking maybe an invade onto this left side camp. They decide not to go for it. 
North gonna go for the true and Viz. Not gonna be revealed. There's the VP onto two. Leap comes on out, and there it is. The combo comes on through. Lands. There's the Horrify. Blessed Shield committed as well, but Hanzo taken down. Cyan gets the icing away. So one member down on the side of Wood League as we have this Protector spawning. Top fort is going to be focused here by I Must Feed. Almost certainly go down to this pressure. As we see Gazlo continuing to push down here in the bottom lane. Ronan cleaving like a madman on this Gazlo. And there's the invade. I Must Feed going to move on up here. Down two levels. There's not a whole lot they can do. They're going to try to contest here. There's the... There's the Blizzard on the point. Cyan creating space here. Dragon Strike onto the back line. Lister Queen of Begully taking huge amounts of damage. May somehow still alive here. Cyan trying to get away. Camp is claimed. Droopy, oh no, is going to be taken out by that turret. So they lose the camp, but they get the kill. I must feed. Now just get to clear away this camp. Ronan in some trouble here. Sudden Bears to slam, but he's slamming away. Picking up the kill there onto Gazlo. Gazlo having a having a tough day at the office down there at the bottom lane. Need some need some water. I must feed up three levels here. Move back to their siege camp in the top lane. Wood League. Looking for a way to get back into this game. They're now just down two levels. Gazlo now back on the battlefield. No one holding the top lane for now, so getting a little bit of extra time is Wood League here. Gazlo headed to the off lane, so not going for a full fight. I Must Feed is going to go ahead and pick up another heal camp here. To help them out in this engagement. VP onto the back. Is going to land onto two. North fishing there. There's the leap. Blizzard comes out, is going to try to get the stun onto Sonya, will land, North has to blink away, but Cavalor is so low, it's a huge triple kill. Droopy trying to get away as well, Hanzo goes down, Zeratul actually going down in the midst of that. But, I must feed, with that Zeratul seeking those VPs, has all the time in the world for the rest of the team to come on through and land those big combos. Trying to make sure you're spread out for VPs all the time is such a chore here. Very difficult. Ronan continuing the push down the bottom lane, trying to find that level 16 for Wood League. So many, so many souls on the battlefield. <laughs> Lister Fiend controlling this top point here for I Must Feed. Is going to go ahead and convert our second protector of the game over to the red side. We'll see what they do with it here as Wood League moving to defend their Wood mid lane. Has taken control of a protector. I was wondering if the protector was just going to run it down top, but it looks like they are going to move to the mid. Throwing out the laser there, getting that last bit of turret. Up still, you know, level 16s are about to be here for, uh, for Wood League. So I must feed does have to be a little bit careful, but they are just going to move on down to the bottom lane. Work on this siege to help control point C. Cyan in the back line is going to get caught by that, uh, by that hit from Johanna. Sudden Bears with the leap is not going to land though onto Cyan. The chase continues. Dragon Strike is out. The avalanche does not land. That's a lot of ults committed on the side of, of, um, of Wood League. And a lot still available for I Must Feed. No kills to be had. Zeratul pushing through this top lane, forcing a response here from Gazlo. Is Ronan going to try to deal with North up here in the top lane? North's got to be careful, or uh, Ronan got to be careful here as North is starting to come online with those late game talents. Protector dancing around will expire here. John Goodman, a little bit low. Gul'dan, 38 stacks, so almost online with that Ruinous Affliction level 16 talent. Zeratul continuing to shark around here. Mid lane pressure coming on through. Zeratul thinking about coming across. Is going to be revealed by Droopy. So this should be a safe camp take 
They've already taken the camp here as I must feed. Are they going to move across the map? They're not going to be able to get there in time. They're thinking about possibly moving towards that heal camp as North pushes through the mid. Sonia down in the bottom lane, Gazlo in the top, so we've got a 4v4 here in the mid lane. Level 20s are here for I Must Feed. We'll see if they want to get aggressive here. Four members, five members are here. Is John Goodman looking to move across? Looks like it's just going to be a heel camp claim by I Must Feed here. Right now, maintaining pressure in the mid is Wood League. John Goodman trying to ward them back. Or thinking about a big VP he is looking for a flank, but this fort's still standing. He is a problem for the combo. North is going to be revealed by that scatter arrow. Uh oh. North avoids the horrify there, but John Goodman gets caught. Avalanche will not land on the Zeratul. North still sharking around. Has that VP. There's three. Three members going to be caught. The leap going to come on through. The full combo is out. That's a triple kill. Gonna be a quad. Cyan taken down here. Ronan coming on up to try to help, but will fall with their friends. It's a full ace here for I Must Feed. And they may be thinking about core. They're gonna move up to this top lane. They're gonna take out the keep and they're gonna move on through. Still 30 seconds till anyone's up on the side of wood league and this looks like it's gonna be gg i must feed with a strong combination there with the void prison with the leap with the kalethos combo zeratul gonna be pushed away from the core there and that is going to be all she wrote i must feed pick up the series victory gg all righty Taking a quick look at the final screen there, I Must Feed definitely had the control in that game. 21 kills to 2. Very nicely played. Droopy on the Hanzo, top damage for, uh, for Wood League there. Nearly 42,000 damage coming on out. Droopy did a great job of revealing the Zeratul on the edges. Good trades there, but ultimately just not enough to keep Wood League in the game there. Lister Veen on the Kael'thas getting some big bomb value off of those Void Prison combinations. Coming out on top with damage a little over 44,000. Take a quick look at the talent screens and then we'll see if we can find an interview with our victors I must feed. Alrighty. Let's see if anyone wants to hop in there with me. Oops. Bada boom. Let's see if we can get anyone. Hello. Hey, Hi. how's it going? Congratulations on the two one victory. Thank you. That was a, a really hairy ARAM to recover from. <laughs> <laughs> it was a, it was an interesting one there. Well, we can, we can talk about the ARAM. We went in there, we saw some wave clear on the side of Wood League and no wave clear on the side of I Must Feed. Um, yeah, I mean, it, it seemed like you had a pretty clear plan, plan there, which was Kel'Thuzad finds picks, you heal up through the team fights and move ahead, but you just kind of sort of got locked out in the early game there. Was there much you could do in that early game or was it really relying on those late game talents to be able to move up like you did? I probably um, could have hit more chains to make it better, but I don't know. We kind of had some miscommunication during the, I don't know what it's called, it's not really a draft, but the character selection phase of the ARAM. So it made our comp not quite what we were expecting, but <laughs> I don't know. Not much we can do early game when they have so much more wave priority over us. Yeah, I mean, it was just... I've never seen a zero-kill ARAM as late as that went. Uh, I mean, that's it true. Was, uh, it was yeah. a weird one, to be sure, until <laughs> things started popping off there once we got, you know, 
into level 15, level 16, but uh, it ended up being know. a really good game. Uh, I was yeah. a really, su- really surprised how, how that's uh, ended up t- playing out. It was it was cool to see the comp you ended up with actually executing how it should have. Because I thought, like, as it was going, I'm like, oh no, they're just going to get pushed into core and lose in 10 minutes. But, you know, it started to, you started to rebound, you started to find those picks, and just, I think I, you needed maybe five, six more wipes to get through to the core. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, ultimately just didn't come through there. Good, good fight, though, with what you had. But uh, moving on to... Uh, well, Sky of Foundry was looked pretty textbook out there with that uh, with that VP and leap combo. Was there, you know, was there much you had to worry about on the other side, or was it just find your combos, move through the map? Uh, I, I think it's you. You're the Zeratul player. I think you get a you're yeah, the one who knows all the stuff um, you can do a cup for. We're very practiced running the Zeratul comps at this point. Um, so once we saw that they locked in double squishy backline characters that they just want to like try and sit on top of and protect with the Gazlo and the May, I believe, was their tank? Yeah, May. Mm-hmm. Um, once we saw them take those picks, they don't really have any instantaneous type of crowd control for the Zeratul outside of maybe a very good Ariel E. But without that coming through, it was pretty safe for us to just move through the map and be aggressive on all the objectives using the VP on cooldown. I don't think there was any point in that game where we went more than 20 seconds where VP was off cooldown. Yeah, I mean, there was definitely a lot of searching and finding, you know, two members, three members with those throughout the game. And just a, you know, a pretty potent combo there. Looking very good there in game number three and bringing through uh, the 2-1 victory. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. So still pretty early here in the XGDI. We were in, uh, what was it, week two here? Week three? Still pretty early on. But uh, yeah, a lot of lot of season left. Are there any opponents you're looking forward to facing here in the round robin phase? Well, I think we've um, we're really excited to um, face off against Probius. Uh, they always beat us every time, but they always have some sort of really interesting um, draft every time we play them. Um, so I'm excited to see that. I think last time was something like um, Vikings, Samuro, Abathur on Dragonshire. <laughs> Probius. Um, they took so the spot lane. I, I like I like to see what they pull out. So I'm excited for that uh, matchup. Awesome, excellent to hear. We'll have to see where that lands on the calendar, whether it's first or second half. I haven't checked myself, but definitely be looking out for that one. I must feed versus. I think Probius. it's uh, next see. week or the week oh, after. Oh, really? Wow. So we don't have to wait too long. Fantastic. No. <laughs> All righty. Well. Congratulations once again on the 2-1. Thank you very much for that. I'm happy to do it. Uh, any final shout-outs you'd like to make before we close out? Yeah, shout-outs to Wood League um, for picking the <laughs> for picking ARAM and some excellent games. Um, I, that ARAM was really, ended up being really fun. So uh, those, those are good games. Shout-out to my team um, and our tank sub, John. And Corex for being on reserve, and shout out to the rest of the uh, XGDI community and for hosting everything, uh, and to you for uh, casting. My pleasure entirely. All right, North Sudden Bears, thank you so much for joining me. Congratulations and good luck going forward. Thank you. Thank Have you. a good day, everyone. You too.